The villages of Pedigo and Balik, located on the border of counties Donegal and Fermanagh, became the focus of intense military activity during May and June of 1922. Running through Pedigo is the Termon River, which partition transformed into a border between two states, counties Donegal in Ireland and Fermanagh in Northern Ireland. The majority of the population lived on the West Bank, in Donegal, which also included the Diamond or Town Square, the RIC barracks and the train station. In April 1922, its strategic importance was reflected in the decision by the Irish government to place army garrisons on the Donegal side. At the same time, a significant number of IRA men had also arrived in the area, either to take part in the Northern Offensive or because they'd been driven out of the six counties. Up to late May 1922, Michael Collins' Northern Offensive, which was intended to destabilise the Unionist state, had largely consisted of hit-and-run attacks. Then, on May 27th, what had been a low-level guerrilla campaign ignited into open warfare. Crossing westward over Lower Loch Erne from Ross Carr in County Fermanagh, with a flotilla of small boats towed by a hastily armed pleasure steamer known as the Lady of the Lake. With Mrs. Laverton at the helm, 50 members of the Ulster Special Constabulary, led by Basil Brooks, in response to the Irish forces' presence in Pettigo, landed near the townland of Legs before marching the short distance to the grounds of Maharamina Castle, seven kilometres east of Balik. On the following day in Balik, Commandant General Joe Sweeney, head of the 1st Northern Division of the pro-treaty IRA, who had been sent to report on the situation, narrowly escaped death when a detachment of USC snipers targeted him in the village. Shortly after, Brooke and the USC approached the area from the southeast in a convoy. Just outside Balik, and actually inside Donegal, the convoy was ambushed by Irish units on a particularly narrow stretch of the road. The driver of the lead car was killed in the initial volley and crashed into a ditch. Their way forward blocked and subject to close fire from both flanks, the USC expedition panicked. Unable to turn around on the confined route, they resorted to driving in reverse for nearly two kilometers along the Loch Shore Road before abandoning their vehicles and speeding on foot towards Loch Erne, where they came under further fire from the IRA sections now holding Maharamina Castle. On Thursday the 1st of June, under orders from Churchill, a combined force consisting of troops from the 18th Infantry Brigade, supported by the Royal Irish Constabulary, and the Ulster Special Constabulary approached Pettigo from the east in a long convoy. After breaking through Irish barricades and moving up Main Street, British forces met strong resistance from the small section of volunteers at the machine gun post at Drumharaf Hill, Donegal, just south of the village, who continued to resist for several hours until they ran out of ammunition, leading to their capture. One of their number, Patrick Flood, a local lad, was shot dead during the fighting while several others were wounded. A similarly dire situation faced the units defending the Waterfoot, who were overrun after two hours of close quarters combat in the marshes. Eventually, most of those who fought free of the encirclement at Pettigo were rescued by local residents, or INA units in cars and horse traps and brought to safety in Donegal town, some 26 kilometers away. There, up to 50 wounded and exhausted men were temporarily sheltered in the old workhouse. In the following months, the local nationalists who remained in Pettigo had to suffer under British occupation of their village. Pressure was mounting on Michael Collins and Dublin to get the British soldiers removed from this part of southeast Donegal which was now in the Free State jurisdiction. Negotiations about the situation in Pettigo continued between the Irish and the British governments. A triple agreement was eventually reached between the British government, the Provisional Government and the Government of Northern Ireland, by which a neutral zone some four or five miles wide was to be established in the Pettigo and Balik district. Within this zone, 
no persons other than British troops were to be officially armed. The British military occupied Pedigo until January 1923, when a settlement was negotiated between Dublin and London, which involved the Bishop of Clogher and Dean Keown, prior of Loch Derg. When the British army withdrew from the Irish side of Pedigo, Irish officials took over along with Angarda Siakana and the Free State Army. On the 3rd of April 1923, a hard border was created with the erection of a customs barrier. Belique Fort and its environs were handed over in August 1924. The battles of Pedigo and Belique were the last time pro- and anti-treaty forces fought together before the Civil War. <laughs>